classroom. May I come in, please? Can I take my seat? Please take your seat. Thank you, sir. Stay in Delhi or Madhya Pradesh? Madhya Pradesh, ma'am. No, uh, I've come here for the mock preparation and for the interview. Okay, you'll stay for a while? Uh, yes. Where are you going to stay? Uh, ma'am, I'm staying at a relative's place. It's near Nevada Metro Station. Okay, and it's a nice place? It's a nice place. You get your food and everything? Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm uh, blessed that way. My parents have accompanied me. So oh, they are taking nice. care. Very good. Yes, it's a lovely uh, environment that way. Yeah. So, I am reading on your DAF that you are, you are right on contemporary social legal issue, right? And you are including publications in newspapers and journals. So, which was your last publication? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I wrote on uh, unconstitutionality of marital rape. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a publication that has also been published in the book uh, by NLSIU Research and Development Center. Okay. And do you write some fiction or just factual? Factual information. Uh, factual uh, information, factual. interpretation uh, of the law as applicable to the problem. Okay. So, did you go to Frankfurt? Uh, yes, ma'am. You went there for this arbitration moot court, right? Yes. And where did you stand? Uh, Ma'am, we got the Young Memorial Award for the best memorial. Uh, okay. We could not qualify in the orals beyond uh, quarterfinals. Were you two, three people or just one? A uh, team of three people, ma'am. Three people. Yeah, that's very good. So, you are a law, gradu uh, law graduate? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. So, tell me what are the legal issues which face women in day-to-day -day life and they can't get out of it? So, certain legal issues, two, three. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, foremost would be uh, the need for inclusive policy. Uh, that's one thing that we need to work upon. Uh, to give an example, uh, marital rape still remains uh, uh, not a criminal offence in India. A second aspect, uh, madam, issue would be lack of uh, awareness or uh, that has to be addressed. For example, under domestic violence, the, it has been termed as shadow pandemic uh, okay. and women are still hesitant to raise their voice against it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and third aspect, uh, madam, would be uh, despite law, despite willingness of implementation, uh, the societal mindset has not kept pace with the legal developments. So, right. these are the three areas. So, these are two, three areas, right. No oh, evidence, because there is no, uh, you know, witness. I'm going in a train, someone thrusts me and then just put something in my bag. And I, the, the policeman, after five minutes, that you have got drug. And I don't even know what a drug is. And there are certain sections of the society, I mean, malpractice, let us say. Suppose there is a household and they keep a maid, hair part. And she uh, feels like roaming around and doesn't want to look at the child, small child. So, she will put some little opium in a hat and put it on the top. So, the child will sleep for 2-3 hours and then she will look around and don't bother. So, now how do you check that in a household, I am talking. Indeed, ma'am, uh, it's it's a gravest of an offence that yes. an individual could commit, especially the age of the victim involved. Yes. Uh, under such circumstances, uh, madam, the foremost would be while appointing a maid or taking on a maid, I think uh, the test should not only be the capability of handling yes. the child, but also the value system with which you come. And I think an interaction could prime if establish that. Uh, beyond that, uh, madam, I, I would suggest that there are certain practices that privileged ones could afford that would be uh, CCTV cameras being installed yeah. in the household. They are very helpful. Right. So, you can put two, three cameras all over the place and mm. then especially where the child is kept. Indeed, madam. So, then you can detect, the parent can at least. So, tell me that uh, you have done accountancy also. You're, you Were you a chartered accountant ever? Uh, no, madam. That was just a subject in 11th and 12th. So, you just studied it and put it off, right? But yes. it's a good good field. Okay, now tell me one more thing that about sabotage. Suppose you are a police officer and you are sensing sabotage about two buildings away. How will you know about it? There's so much crowd, there's so many people. How do you know? Ma'am, uh, intelligence network uh, has to be strengthened, uh, especially uh, under urban uh, development, as you mentioned, because of the crowd involved, mm -hmm. especially how these activities are discreetly undertaken. So, they are not uh, evidence on surface of it. I think a strong uh, community policing as well as an intelligence uh, network within the association uh, would help in that. Uh, so, we have CCTV camera, 
all night it's running and at the right time it's been uh, plunked off, Indeed. right? Then I can't find out what else would be the media then. Um, uh, in a critical infrastructure places, uh, I think the employees and the officials need to be uh, sensitized about any uh, such suspicious activities of individuals mm -hmm. roaming around without purposes, a uh, past system uh, permits could be introduced at such uh, sensitive places. Uh, that's one thing My I could help. think of. Yeah. My help, yes. Right, sir? Mm -hmm. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Indore. Yes, now, Indore has been getting this uh, award of cleanest city in the country for the last, I think, five, six years. Yes, sir. So, what is so special about the people of uh, Indore or uh, the administration of Indore? Uh, it's a collaborative effort, okay. uh, but if I had to uh, pinpoint one uh, reason, uh, I think uh, cleanliness has now become people's movement in Indore, okay. and that's what I would attribute the success to. It's 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 now a matter of habit for them. Uh, it has been so ingrained that uh, even a five minute delay in the collecting van of garbage really causes unease among the people. So that's the value that they ascribe to the notion of cleanliness, and I think leadership and both of so what what is the role of technology in this? Do you see any role of technology also? Uh, indeed, sir. Uh, technology has played a central role. Uh, for example, all these collecting vans are geotagged. Okay. Uh, there is a central command uh, center uh, which yes. tracks the movement. Uh, for the technology is very helpful in terms of creating a circular economy. Uh, the How the uh, remediation of the site has been undertaken, how the processing of the waste are uh, being undertaken. So, technology is really aiding the people-led movement in Indore. You should, uh, you said that uh, uh, it is people's uh, involvement also. So, how you, in personal capacity, how you have uh, been uh, helping the civic administration? Yes, uh, so I think uh, from at your, at your own level, yeah. Yes, uh, foremost is uh, fulfilling my civic responsibility yeah. of uh, waste segregation at home, uh, keeping two proper dustbins for dry and waste or uh, wet waste, uh, timely deposition of the same when the van comes, uh, rather than uh, okay. So, for example, in my locality, it comes at 6.30 in the morning. So, everyone has an excuse, oh, we sleep late or we get up late. But that's never been an excuse in my entire household. So, we have been very uh, committed towards this uh, goal. Uh, for the sir, uh, in my capacity as an individual also, whenever we go to a public place or you see someone has dropped the garbage, it's our responsibility to pick it up and throw it at a proper place. So, okay. these are the small ways I uh, contribute. So, tell me, uh, has uh, indoor... Uh inspired and motivated other cities in MP also, other cities also picking up on sanitation and cleanliness? Yes, uh, sir. That has really become a role model uh, uh, mm -hmm. and project. Uh, I think that's been uh, recognized uh, recently on the Civil Services Day when our uh, district collector of Indore, uh, um, Sri uh, Manish Singh Ji, was awarded by oh. Prime Minister of Excellence oh. Award. Uh, MP is also, uh, you know, uh, it's got the largest number of rivals. So, what is your view on the socio-economic condition of tribals in MP? Yes, sir. Uh, tribals in MP are uh, approximately 21 percentage, which is very close to the quarter uh, that's been there. Okay. Um, now, there have been progressive measures being undertaken. Um, they are legitimate concerns. For example, it has one of the highest uh, rate of malnutrition among children. Uh, there are also concerns about uh, the anemic uh, status of uh, children. But at the same time, uh, there have been a lot of progress in the socio-economic uh, parameters. Uh, for example, uh, Project Tiranga Thali that has been introduced, okay. mothers have been onboarded as mothers cooperatives, so, which shows that it's moving in the right direction. They have a higher sex ratio as compared to the general population. What could be the reason? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, Inclusive policy is one, uh, as I uh, gave an example of mother's cooperatives being created to uh, act as a check for the implementation of government policies. So, it really shows the willingness uh, of the officials as well as public at large to uh, make greater strides in socio-economic Good. status. Good. Now, what do you understand by, by the statement I am making now? Law is not law if it violates the principles of eternal justice. I beg your pardon, could you repeat this? Law is not law if it violates the principles of eternal justice. Indeed, sir. I uh, agree uh, with the statement. Uh, I say so because law is not merely a piece of legislation that legislators my, or the authority would have enacted. Uh, the basic principle is of fairness and justice. And that's imbibed under the Article uh, 13 of our Constitution as well. Uh, so, without those principles of uh, eternal justice, uh, I don't think law can serve any purpose in a society. 
my last question now that the what is the law of usury i am not to be, I beg your pardon okay I'll usury say. i will spell it u s u r y i'm not a uh, very sure we heard of the term usury uh, usurious loans usurious interest rate Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Make a. Okay. <laughs> you seem to have done a stint with Unilever. What were you involved with uh, in with Unilever? Uh, yes, sir. So I was uh, recruited as part of Unilever Future Leadership uh, Program. So though my post said legal manager, it was more like a learning experience for me because I entered the system as a graduate. This kind of an internship. Yeah. Uh, So I, I entered as a graduate, or uh, so it was the training period uh, that to understand the business. But you would have seen, from your point of view, from a legal point of view, what compliances are required, yes. etc. What do you think is the biggest hurdle of compliance as far as the Unilever products are concerned? They are now proclaiming to the world that we'll get net zero very soon, and uh, they have ambitious global programs for getting to net zero. So. Where, where where do you think is the biggest hurdle? And I'm making it specific because you know that company. The biggest hurdle would be in terms of um, the minute compliances that are there, and also a way around that could be carved out. Uh, for example, uh, every packaging uh, says that there are certain requirements that have to be put on the specific single panel. Now, often because of the way the design has been established or the packaging that's done on the back side, or they are open claims and there are small disclaimers. So, I think uh, being uh, privy to the, these practices becomes important uh, as a person who is uh, handling the compliance uh, because it has to be in true spirit. Do you think legally extended producers' responsibility is one of the biggest headaches that uh, the companies have? No, sir. Um, I don't think it's a headache. It's a responsibility on our part. Uh, and Nobody fulfills that responsibility. Why? It's been a. Uh, so there can only be two answers: A, they don't want to; B, the way it has been designed, it cannot be. I think there is willingness to fulfill it. It might be difficult, or uh, and if we see most. Uh, Only in terms of commercial benefit that could be derived, a counter argument could be established. But I do not see it in purely monetary terms. I think it's more of a social responsibility. It's the reason why your company is sustaining and thriving, and that's the least we can do back for the society. Okay, we'll move away from Unilever to your earlier stint as a law student. You graduated from Bangalore. Yes. Yeah. You've come come out of one of the most pre, I mean, premier law schools that. India has never had an inclination to practice or to go into corporate law. Uh, no, sir. Uh, being a part of civil services and specifically being an IAS officer has been a childhood dream. Uh, so I have entered law field uh, knowing this dream. Uh, the reason I took on a job uh, was mostly a financial necessity because education, especially legal education, is not very affordable in India, unfortunately. Tell me. You know, earlier the universities used to offer law graduation program. Now you have a CLAT which gets you into law schools, and you have a five-year compressed course which gives you a graduation as well as. I think it's done well for the law because the queue is getting longer and longer of people getting into law. I think. Uh, what well, what changes come about? I think uh, enhancement of interest and improvement in quality. Uh, these are the two factors I would uh, point out. Uh, because CLAT as a prestigious exam, it has truly uh, given a level playing field, uh, and it seeks to provide a level playing field, if I may put so, uh, in terms of opportunities that students can access from across the country and not be limited to ones who who have people in their own family to, to guide them through a certain college or contacts. It's more of a transparent system of entry into the legal profession. So, if you get into the civil services, what is your carry away from the law school? And I am not talking about hard laws. Apart from your legal knowledge, what is the biggest carry away that you would do from law school, Bangalore? The biggest carry away would be a very strong sense of justice. 
uh, that's what has motivated me since my childhood to be in services. I think that resolve was only strengthened with my knowledge and experience as a legal professional. You think as a district administration, you are in a position to really deliver justice to everyone? Indeed, sir. It's an ideal. Uh, no, all, all such things are lofty ideals. doesn't matter. Yes, but sir, you but think you are looking at getting to them? I do, I do, sir, and I hope I am able to deliver that uh, as well. Okay, so now let us just take a quick practical example. There is a person in your in your jurisdiction, whether whichever position you hold, who has an issue, has been wrong. There is no law to back it up. What would be your reaction? So, I mean, there can be many things. You could be, you know, absolutely brutal and do what you want to, you could follow some rule of law, you could follow another game altogether. What would you be your preference? So when there is no law, a uh, sense of equity prevails. And as an administrator, I would exercise my uh, discretion to that extent in ensuring that despite non-existence of law, justice still rules. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. So, Shadhyar, yes, sir. you would be district magistrate if you get to the day. So there is this district magistrate, there is also district election officer, then you have the collector as you call in Madhya Pradesh also. So tell me, uh, what are the legal powers that are available to these three posts? <laughs> From my limited uh, knowledge, uh, the as an executive magistrate, as uh, three of them would hold the position of executive magistrate. Uh, in terms of legal powers, specifically, uh, if I may uh, give an example, Indian Penal Code, Section 144, uh, that deals with uh, power in case of unlawful assembly. There are also uh, powers being undertaken in terms of uh, if any actions are being done which has wronged the law, then you have power to take person under preventive detention. Uh, so, these are a uh, few examples I could think. So, I am not very uh, sure about <laughs> the whole. So, not even election powers, the, where do you derive from? Uh, yes, sir. Election power as a district election office, officer who has been appointed by the election commission. So, that would be derived from the plenary power of election commission of India coupled with the bylaws that might be. What are those powers of election commission and uh, the constitution? Uh, Article 324, uh, so it gives power. And of there is no other statutory law for uh, empowering uh, a district election officer? Does it, does constitution mention about district election officers? Um, I do not think constitution mentions district elect uh, uh, election officers. However, they empower um, the election commission to conduct and supervise and Pursuant to those powers, a uh, few legislations have been acted, like the uh, People's Representative Act of 1950 and 1951. So, I, but I'm not sure. You're not sure. It doesn't matter. That. I'll I'll shift to some other thing. So, this Jahangir Puri thing that happened in Delhi, right? Now, Supreme Court stayed, and then stayed again, extended the stay. The government said uh, notices were issued. Now, what was so illegal that prime of SI, the Supreme Court saw that they continued the stay? Was there anything illegal or something else? So, uh, I don't think it was illegal, but it was prime of SI uh, situation because of the sensitivity involved. Uh, uh, it was not a direct uh, implication, but there were conditions uh, around those uh, instances of uh, uh, activities of tackling illegal encroachment that were being undertaken, that Supreme Court deemed fit that there should be an independent inquiry into the nature of action that administration has undertaken. So that apart, but suppose if you were DM of Indore and a similar situation happens and uh, you know, uh, there was a communal clash after a procession and there were an illegal encroachments and notices have been issued, they have been served, all formalities have been done, would you go for removal of encroachments the next day? So, these are two separate issues, one of communal violence that has to be take, tackled on a separate footing, then vis-a-vis -vis illegal uh, encroachment. If uh, notices have been issued, then I would follow the due process uh, regardless of, uh, because one or the other… Regardless of? Regardless of the situation of communal violence that could be undertaken or addressed in a separate uh, footing. Okay, it will not have any impact, like impact. tomorrow 
Today, the communal crisis has happened, tomorrow you remove encroachment, they are not related to each other. I see as a uh, separate uh, process, yeah. uh, but uh, having, separate. having said that, sir, uh, if the due process does permit me that I could delay it by a couple of days, I, I would take that action as well. No, you have all the powers, you can delay. Uh, why, why should you delay? So given the sensitivity of the situation, uh, because uh, it's uh, very well said that justice should not only be done, but also seen to be done. Uh, so that's one aspect that I would comply with. Uh, tell me some of the landmark judgments of Supreme Court, which has empowered women in India, socially and economically. Yes, sir. So I think uh, the foremost uh, that comes to my mind is Shakha versus State of Rajasthan, uh, which uh, promises a secure uh, workplace free of sexual harassment. Uh, that uh, Supreme Court stepped in to fill the vacuum that legislature uh, had created. Uh, second uh, would be uh, the Kutuswami judgment uh, that was recently on right to privacy because that has a great impact on other offences. If I may give an example, in Joseph Shine versus Union of India, sir, uh, they uh, decriminalized the offence of adultery. Uh, and pursuant further, there have been debates about uh, sexual offences being made neutral. All these derive their value from the impact that uh, right to privacy jurisprudence has created. So these are... Uh, there are some bigger precedence of judicial you know judgments which have a direct impact on 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 the women much more than the two that you have mentioned so, so Kesham Nanda Bharti was the state of Kerala which lays down the doctrine of basic structure holds the most important uh, basic structure has nothing to do with women empowerment what about triple the lakh yes sir that's equally uh, important and very what about Hindu succession act yes Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Shilta. Yes, sir. We go back slightly in history and check up about Article 370. I understand that uh, Supreme Court will be examining the issue, uh, say, next July or something. So, what do you have to say on Article 370? Uh, what will happen to it? So my personal opinion on mm. uh, indeed sir. So um, I say that um, the actions of the government would be upheld by the apex code. Uh, mm. I say so because the, uh, the way amendments have been undertaken, uh, the process has been rooted both in historical context as well as the present scenario. Mm. Uh, to give an example, precisely the route that was followed was uh, the government amended Article 367, which defined constituent assembly of Jammu and Kashmir mm. and that was changed to uh, the present state uh, legislative assembly. Mm. That's primarily because uh, initially when it, it was created it a temporary, yes, it was uh, a temporary arrangement. Right. So that was converted to real time. Mm. Now coming to the situational aspect, during those days, uh, uh, Jammu Kashmir was under president's rule. Mm -hmm. uh, thereafter, therefore, the powers were exercised uh, by the president uh, pursuant to those uh, since state legislative assembly was not in function. And hence, a uh, proclamation was issued revoking or uh, 370 or uh, mm -hmm. uh, special uh, status that has been given. So it's a mm -hmm. uh, completely legal route uh, that has been undertaken. Do you think it was fair? Yes, sir. Yes, hmm? yes, sir. Mm, it has been done in a fair game. Yes, sir. That uh, assembly was not there, so governor is there, so governor has done it something like that. Yes, sir. Is it not? Okay. Uh, suppose I would uh, have been searching for Article 3, 5A, capital A. 35A cap. Where I get it? I was not able to get it between 35 and 36. You take a book of Constitution of India, look at section, uh, looking for section 35A. Logically, it should be somewhere between section 35 and section 36. It's not there. Where it is? Uh, so, because it uh, gives a special provision for state of Jammu Kashmir, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's separately created because there was initially a separate constitution. Uh, framework that was created for Jammu and mm -hmm. Kashmir. So, we will find that uh, under that instead of Where? the code uh, for uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, no. I am not able to recall the... It's not there. It's there at the end of the book. Okay, sir. So 35A not... is at the end of the book. I am not aware. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. Then uh, another act is Identification of Prisoners Act 1920. Recently, it has been repealed. After repealing, new act has been brought in. What is new there? 
so uh, two prominent changes have been created mm -hmm. uh, first uh, in terms of the collection of the material that could be undertaken it has been expanded mm -hmm. uh, to include behavioral attributes uh, as well as specimens including dna uh, second aspect is the expansion in the scope of people covered now it has also ex uh, included expansion in the scope of the people that it seeks to uh, govern uh, for example uh, under preventive detention law Mm -hmm. Those who have been detained can also be now covered under the law. Mm -hmm. So these are the two changes that have. Where been. else the scope has been widened? We talk about widening the scope. In one more sector, it has been widened. Mm. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. I am not aware. Okay, that's in the who who can collect the sample okay. on that area also. It has been widened. I will read upon it, sir. Thank okay. you. Okay, so there's there one more armed forces special powers act. There is a particular section on which there is a hue and cry. Hue and cry is there in the entire act itself, but there is more hue and cry on a particular aspect. Which aspect is that? So according to me, uh, it's on unlimited power to search and seize uh, that's been mm -hmm. given, uh, coupled with legal immunity that has been granted to the forces. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam. <laughs> so you are a very promising candidate, according to me. And you have legal knowledge, but you can brush it up a little by sections you were somewhere going wrong with the section. And you can use a, your legal knowledge in your work. Because I collected a lot of legality and a lot of revenue and case work. Right. So you can use it and you are a good communicator, you smile. but And you can handle certain situations placed you know, in front of you. Somehow I found your talking. Uh, did not hear stalking, so I thought it was talking. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I did not get it right. So, sir, what are you? are very good candidate, as Madam has said. Just one or two small points, other honorable members will also say. One, you should avoid using this, this childhood dream of becoming an artist. Okay. That you should avoid. Okay. Second, you used, at uh, least uh, once you use that. For my limited knowledge, that also. Okay. Sir. Same, in my opinion, if you are confident, reasonably confident, then say straight away. Otherwise, if you are not confident, then straight away say, oh, sir, I don't know. Or maybe you can ask for permission for me, I guess, make a guess. Okay. Say. But for my limited knowledge, that means you are putting yourself on defensive. That is wrong. Otherwise, you are, you are very pleasant, pleasant personality. साड़ी के बारे में एक ये मुझे थोड़ा बताइए कि आपको जो प्रिंट है तो कोई एमपी का कोई पर्टिकुलर प्रिंट तो नहीं है सर स्पेशल बुक एमपी का इट्स अ माहेश्वरी सिल्क साड़ी इट्स अ जीआई फ्रॉम एमपी नथिंग टू डू विद ट्राइब और एमपी अच्छा ओके Ma'am, can I ask one, so when, can I ask one yes, question? Uh, so when we wear sarees in UPSC, I was seeing uh, it being my first time. I seeing people wearing the same color palette. Uh, so is it so that I I so light, light, light blue, blue. yes, yeah, so I was trying to. You can wear light blue, light green, light pink, soft cut. Right. It's not like uh, necessary to have a. It says that you wear something which a nurse should wear. It's not written there. Thank you. Can wear a light color, any light color. Thank you, ma'am. Right. Sir, we need. However, take it off. Anyway, so well done. But uh, two, three small suggestions. A, you need to be very sure about what you are saying. You know, you know how to communicate, you know how to try and convince, all that is excellent. It's better to withdraw if you don't have the full spectrum of knowledge on an issue, rather than try and attempt something where you are likely to go wrong. Thanks. That creates a worse impression. So don't do that. Thanks, sir. And second, you don't have to answer everything. If you ask 10 questions and you do 7 very well, that's good enough. So, don't get immediately into an attempt to, you know, think of some answer in your mind and put it across. Don't do that. Yes, sir. Just refrain a little. Take it. So, You'll do well. Don't worry. Thank you, sir. So, if I may ask, uh, is this uh, one question that you asked about as a compliance for two, it's in this context because that's one thing that I created on, on the spot. I was not very sure if I should... Uh, so I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. 
after that, yes, I have a little thing. I'll spend some time with you. Yes, sir. it's my meeting, so. Yeah, please. You see, you have a very pleasing personality. You are a very good communicator. Now, behind the personality and behind a good communicator, you have to have solid knowledge. Right? Yes, sir. And you have seen that 80% of the questions were either related to, directly related to law or indirectly. This is what is going to happen there also. So, it may be applied. Now, incidentally, you were not good at your own subject and expectations were very high because you are from the best institution. So, what went wrong? You have not brushed up or maybe your job doesn't require, you know, this kind of, it doesn't require. But since you are a LLB so. from a college and it's in the DAF, you have to search for questions from somewhere. They cannot ask you from your company, your legal manager in your company, they will not. You can't ask about private sector. So, you will have to brush up everything. So, as has been already advised to you, I asked you about DM. Now, DM, district election officer, these are such basic things. You said you had a childhood dream. And whatever you dreamt, you did not even, I mean, I'm just saying, care to see, okay, what will be my role as IS officer? And that too, when you are a law student. You may not have seen DM or DO as such, but you have read CRPC. Right. You have read, uh, you know, uh, if not directly, but there is a subject of election also in your 30 electives, right? right. Subjects. The representation of People's Act. So, you have to brush up. Yes. So, you have to brush up. So, you have to brush up. So, you have Plus, usko apply karo. we did not ask directly, okay, what is Article 21? That will not be asked. Yes, sir. But you may have to apply. If you don't know Article 21, how would you apply? Correct? Yes. So, you said 144, it is a CRPC, you said IP. Yes, sir. You said it is unlawful assembly, it is not for unlawful assembly, that is something else. Section 133 CRPC is for unlawful assembly. And th these are the things which are, you know, normally a student may not know, but you being from the law, we asked you this question. About the demolition thing, uh, the Jangir Puri thing, you change your stand. Initially, you said these are two different things. So, what do you think? Why did you change your stand later on? Sir, so, uh, I changed it because I realized that it would be more compassionate uh, approach towards the people because uh, communal violence already would have caused loss of lives, property and it would not be a fair scenario if... Uh, I gave you enough hint uh, that uh, Supreme Court has stayed and stayed again. Yes. Had you read that entire thing properly, you would have been able to answer. Yes. The Supreme Court said, what is the hurry? You did not do all these years, all these days. Why are you doing now? So, one is that it looks as if it was done with vengeance and number two, you being the DM, you will not open another front and, you know, increase uh, the possibility of tensions. And you said they are two different things. I mean, this is, this was, I never say this, such a thing, you know, when you go for the accurate. This can be a situation which can be asked from you. Yes, sir. All right. I agree, so, sir. that is one. Second, landmark judgments, if you had structured them very well, this is such a question, you are a woman and we asked about the judgments from a lawyer. So, these are just specimens, I am not saying that these are the questions which can be asked. So, the common substance is that you have to prepare your law in an applied manner and structure it and remember it also. Right? Now, coming to your delivery and all, just one point, you were smiling a bit too much. No, I think perpetual smile, you know, that brings down the seriousness. So, be, be, you know, just watch this, when you see the video, this may be your part of your personality. 
Once in a while is okay. We tell student candidates here that you are very serious. Smile once at least. So we are telling you be serious at least once. <laughs> okay, so you got the hint. Thank you. Thank you, so sir. You see, not only that you are from best school, your CGP also points out toward the same thing. 6.68 out of 7. So, we expected a very high standard from you. But uh, it was not matched with your what has come out from you. So, when is your interview? Uh, fourth of May, sir. Yeah, fourth. So, whatever time is left with you, you brush up thing and those who are sitting here in Delhi, for them the constitution of India is very important. Constitution of India and Supreme Court. We go by Supreme Court. We don't go by uh, the, this High Court and that High Court. Supreme Court, Constitution of India. The people will leave, uh, just lift this book and want to know your various aspects on different, different aspects of this thing. And uh, women empowerment of course is important. And whatever is current, these are the things current, what have been asked to you, to be current. Only two days back, Supreme Court has said that, okay, we'll examine 370. They were reluctant. They have not been doing it for last two years. But then uh, Mr., uh, I think two advocates stood up and pressured on the Chief Justice that you have to do. So, he said, okay, we do it in July by reconstituting the bench. But since he himself is retiring in next month, that reconstitution will also not help. So, you have to really brush up that so that uh, you do well there. Yeah. And I am speaking from history point of view. We uh, had uh, previous candidates of uh, law earlier, earlier yes, entire interview of internal law. It is a very favorite subject for everybody. So, do that and uh, perhaps if you are able to carry through, you will get very good marks. Hmm. People get impressed, you see, those who are able to speak on law. Thank you. Thank you. Future reforms, mm -hmm. collegium, whatever CGI, CGI, the present CGI is fond of making statements, <laughs> his utterances, whatever he is. You know, and when Chief Justice of India, whether he says, even outside the court, that could be one of the questions for you. Yes. So, all the utterances in the court, you know, what is the the dicta? Yes, for my dicta. You read that also. What is the just judgments? Because those are very simple things which come in the media also. Media does not read the, the last judgment part. They just see what court has said in the, while pronouncing the judgment. So, you are very good, very bright. I was very impressed with your initial start. But then, yeah. subject pe aane ki baat thoda sa. Yeah. So you have to just brush up, padna hai, that's okay. Mock walk ke chakra ne mat raho, you are absolutely personality wise, communication is absolutely fine. Just, Josh. don't it for Yes, sir. Yeah. Sitan, I uh, ask specifically uh, for uh, practical purposes uh, as an administrator, what are the laws that we mostly uh, use or come to? Uh, as an administrator, what areas of law does an administrator? Everything, Everything. Shatha, administration is what you will do as a civil servant. Yes. In every area, whether you start with SDM, you will use law. You will, uh, your BDO, if you will use Manrega Act. Everywhere you have act, basically policies and law. These are the two things we implement right, sir. as bureaucrat. More than policy. The law is more because on the basis of law, the policies are made. So, everywhere, the good question, you must frame your answer before. <clears throat> How would law help you in administration? How would law help you in district administration as a collector? That is the only up to it. Open chief secretary tak nahi pahunche ke, wo to law use karta hi nahi hai waise. That's all. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. CRPC, IPC, if you are in Madhya Pradesh Land Revenue Court, then there are RBC circular and all types of law, PPC also you have to read, otherwise, or Evidence Act, 
You can't do any analysis without evidence back. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, when, sorry. You finish, when you finish. When you finish. Yeah, it means that law is infinite. All the laws you have to know. You have to know the Madhya Pradesh Land Revenue Code, RPC, Circular. Oh. There are so many of them. If you are in Karnataka, you have to know the Land Revenue Code, 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 Yes, ma'am. You said sorry, ma'am. Yeah. You said your interview was on fourth of May. Third May is Akshay Tritya. <laughs> you know what Akshay Tritya <laughs> is? It is a festival. It's a on which on day the child marriages happen. <laughs> so fourth paper will all will be full of child marriages in Rajasthan or Madhya Pradesh. Read Child Marriage Act. It's called Akhar Peach. Akhar Peach. Rajasthan, Correct. MP, UP. So these are all the belt where marriages will happen. Yeah. And these gentlemen will and uh, will see that news. Yeah. And they will they may ask you because you're a lawyer also. Yes, sir. Read whether child marriage is voidable, void or lawful. What is it? Tell me. Voidable, sir. So these things. Anything else you want to know? Yes, no, sir. This is very helpful. I'd like to thank you. Uh, Again, I spend so much on you. Shreya, time on you is because we mm-hmm. find you such a bright candidate. I mean, you will see your name in the list in the first fifty. Thank but you. But if so you much, make sir. these small errors, you know you have to understand. Yes, sir. I promise I'm going to work hard okay. for the next uh, week Excellent. and now uh, improve yeah, upon my performance. Sixty four percent. Our assessment. What is your assessment of your written exam? I gave my best. I'm really not sure on a relative score. Uh, your your, your <laughs> own. I think I did well, sir. Good. That's it. ठीक है. That's it. Talk to you. That's it. ये तो two seventy five. हाँ हाँ. Chance है आपका. Okay, on the next. Thank you.